Simon Michelle from Fig joining us now live. Simon, well, that was always one item of interest that would potentially have held sway, but all a bit kind of anticlimactic, was it not, in the event? Good afternoon, Carson. Look, certainly was. Uh, just before the U.S. session closed, we had the release of the uh, written testimony. Uh, you know, no uh, smoking gun, I suppose you might say. And so we saw the uh, U.S. curve up a couple of basis points. Mm -hmm. Now, again, test-wise, beyond that, you've got you know the, the ECB that's going to be juggling its its calendar of announcements now, quite close up to this election in the U.K. So. How do we get some clarity because the markets are on the one hand going to be diverted by politics but then worries about upgrades to growth from, you know, from the ECB itself? Do you think that will be the one that will really move the market? I think it's certainly looking that way at the moment, Carson, because I think uh, as we draw closer to that UK election, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the polls are showing that uh, it's probably not going to be as tight as what they expected. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you're right. I think, you know, although we're not expecting any significant change to the ECB policy uh, tonight, what we are looking for, as you suggest, there is any change to forecasting by the ECB. Mm -hmm. We'll hear from Mario Draghi that could lead to uh, the start of an unwinding of that quantitative easing program, a bit of a pullback maybe in the volume of bond buying mm -hmm. later this year. So while, you know, no, not likely to have any immediate impact, I think people are really keen to see how Mario Draghi is going to uh, mm. play the uh, recent uh, data we're seeing out of Europe into those forecasts for the ECB. Because that's the point, is it? it is entirely possible he could still cut the inflation forecasts but leave risk assessments unchanged. That would in turn trigger selling, not a rally. Well, this is true, and I mean, we've certainly seen that uh, elsewhere as well. I mean, uh, you know, it's really what's leading these yields lower uh, in the US, Australia here, for example, is those continued downgrades of uh, growth and inflation, both those data uh, points moving away from where the central banks would like to see them mm -hmm. and uh, leading to, in the U.S., obviously, a delay on their uh, hike program and, uh, you know, keeping the RBA pretty steady as she goes here. The, the, the notion of China being blindsided by a ratings downgrade is kind of laughable, but we do give it more credence possibly than it's worth, given its, you know, its self-funding. To that extent, wh why again do we fall back on these, you know, the after-the-event observations by Moody's et al.? Well, this is the thing. I mean, I think, you know, credit rating agencies tend to uh, be reactive. So, you know, they, they wait to do that and make an assessment. You know, you tend to see markets move reflecting concerns. And, uh, you know, we've certainly seen that uh, over in China. You know, seems things over there seem to be, uh, you know, improving a little bit. And, uh, you know, we're certainly seeing some improved capital flows or or the cessation of uh, uh, capital flows out of China, mm -hmm. uh, less uh, support of the yuan. Uh, you know, maturity of their uh, debt markets over there is certainly likely to lead to some defaults. But, you know, I mm. think uh, it's all about, uh, you know, basically sending the message that uh, the Chinese government's not going to support every bond issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I think that's all quite positive. Uh, mm. You know, the, we, we know there's been some concerns around China, around growth levels, but, uh, you mm -hmm. know, they seem to have subsided over the last uh, month or so. Yeah, let's hope there's not a flare-up. Mm. has to be said to blindside even potentially the Fed. We've seen that before today. Thank you, That's Simon. Right. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Carson. Mm. Simon Michel from Fig. We take a break and update you at the top of the hour with every move this market's been making. But after this short break, it's Foxtel's CEO, Peter Tonner, joining Jay.